Good morning my beautiful friends, welcome back to my channel, I hope you're all doing really well. I am filming this video more fresh face than I typically do. I have no makeup on because essentially I have no more makeup, at least I won't after this video. I'm going to treat this sort of as a declutter because it is, but I did just have a staph infection and it was not the best. I would not recommend. So it did affect my skin, my lips and my eyes. So thankfully I got antibiotics. It's gone. I'm feeling much much better even though I probably look a little bit worse than I typically do on camera here. But it did affect my skin, my lips, my eyes and I'm not really keen on doing that again. So essentially I'm going to take all the makeup that can't be sanitized and bin it. I'd rather not have to go through an infection again and reinfect myself. Thinking of all the makeup I have as a collection is a little bit off because I have to remember that it expires and all the makeup I have here, there is no way I could finish all of it before it expired. So if you don't know the expiration date of your makeup products, it should be on every single product that you buy. Typically it is on the bottom of the packaging. So there's a little jar symbol with an open lid and then a number inside that. So here it says 12 and M and that is for 12 months. That is the amount of time the product is good for from the time you open it. I'm gonna go through all the products, throw away everything that's expired, but because I got this infection I also have to throw away quite a bit of product that is technically not expired. I'm gonna pull out all the sort of base products. Oh my goodness, there are so many products here. I genuinely felt like my base product collection was a little bit contained, but this is out of control. I got a huge bag. Yes, let's do it. All right, so this is what I would consider my base products, concealer, powder, foundation, couple of primers. Let me go through all of this. Nine concealers, that is incredibly unnecessary. I have two of the Norris Radiant Creamy Concealers. It's too dark and I always keep thinking I'll fit it when I get tan and I've held on to it for years and nobody should use it when it's that old either way. So I have one in the wrong shade that is far too old and I should never put it on my skin even if I did match that shade. And then I have the correct shade-ish. I feel like it's a little bit too pink but this is the vanilla and it's kind of basically empty so that's easy. Two of the ordinary concealers. I actually bought three shades and I gave one to my sister. Uh, none of them really fit me and this actually says on the back here, I've never seen that before but it says it expires in May of 2022 and this one in March. So I mean these are expired even if they didn't fit me anyways. They are basically full which is... It's so annoying. I really hate trying to buy things online. This It Cosmetics Bye Bye Under Eye. I just think it might be a little bit too light. I really haven't used this much at all. I really like the consistency of it, but I feel like I remember it being a little bit too light, but I think I was like a touch more tan at that point. So I'm gonna try to keep this on. Then I have this Fenty Bright Fix Under Eye Brightener thing. I hate this with a passion. I bought it, I used it once, I hated it, and then since I've used it maybe two or three times, I tried to like it and I just could not get on with it. Maybe it's the shade, I didn't like the consistency, it's quite light, but it just did nothing for me, it's far too light, it's too old. I can't believe I held on to this for over a year and I hated it since the first time I used it. It's going. This is definitely one of the more painful ones because this is the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Concealer and I bought this like a month ago. I just, I can't use this because it's in, it has that kind of doe foot applicator. There is definitely bacteria in here. This is essentially full. I've only used it a handful of times. This really hurts because it's so expensive. Ow but it has to go. I have the Kevin O'Quan Essential Skin Enhancer and they have actually come out with a new packaging. This is so old. In my defense, I tend to use a spatula to take this out, but I've kind of been sometimes, a couple of times, a little bit sloppy with it. I'm definitely gonna repurchase this though because 
it's amazing. I've never seen such high coverage and I actually love mixing this with a primer and that way I kind of have like foundation, BB cream, it's fantastic. I have this Becca under eye. This is technically like a under eye corrector. I think I even show this in my previous declutter which I mentioned was two years ago. I have not used it. It says it's good for 18 months. I just really didn't get on with this product and I think if I remember correctly in that video I did say that I was gonna give it another chance. As you can see this has not been used much whatsoever. Another concealer, the NARS Soft Matte. I actually like their sort of cream concealer better than the liquid one. I've really loved using this. It's disgusting at this point, but you can see I've actually at least hit the bottom of this product. So I don't feel as bad about getting rid of this. And then I have this Charlotte Tilbury corrector. I actually quite like this one. Uh, it's lasted me a really long time. I've been really, really happy with this one. I like the consistency and everything, and I still haven't hit the bottom of it. I feel like I'm going to be much better about taking a spatula and digging out cream products and not using them straight onto my skin. I know people say you can kind of like spray down with alcohol. People are allowed to do whatever they want, but I'm getting rid of that one. That means I am left with one concealer and I'm not even sure this is my color match. <sighs> okay, good, good. It's fine. It's fine, it's fine. Primers. This is the NARS Pro Prime Instant Line and Pore Perfector. This is just like a stick. You can see how much is left. This is such a fun little product. You just essentially drag it onto your skin. I feel like this is such a good travel product. I haven't used it that much. Can I really justify buying it again? I also have this under eye primer from Smashbox. It's like a trial sample and it's good for six months. I think I even had this in my previous declutter and I was just like, I'm gonna give it a chance. I don't even know if I did. Look, this doesn't look used whatsoever. I'm pretty sure I tried it at least once, but obviously I did not feel like I had to use it again. Then I have this Dior Backstage Primer. This is good for 12 months. I have had it for longer. Yes, I definitely have had it for longer. It's very sort of matte and kind of a little bit difficult to use. I feel like I need to apply it and it has to sit for a good while. Otherwise, the makeup kind of looks like, I don't know, it really sticks. It feels like I put glue onto my face. It's just, I really struggled with this and it took me a long time to kind of get the hang of it. And then I've been really into more luminous base finishes so I haven't used this as much as I should but I don't actually think it's a bad product a little bit expensive for how much I've used it I'd say that I wonder how much is actually left of this I mean I don't know why I want to know how much is left because oh there is a ton left you can't actually see it on camera but I've used about this much that's a very expensive product I've been thinking about this a lot and I've tried to kind of shift my thinking a little bit into Thinking about cost per wear, I say this a lot about clothing. Obviously, I talk a lot more about fashion and clothes on this channel than I do makeup. But I think that if we shifted our minds to thinking about cost per wear for makeup products, the price would kind of shift a little bit in our minds as it does for clothing. But when you think about a product like this one has to be used up in 12 months. How often are you gonna use it? If I looked at this product when I bought it, looked at the price because it's not an inexpensive product, it's Dior. If I realized I would only use this much, this much, and it has to be finished in 12 months. I mean, that's very expensive for the very few times I've used it. Breaking down cost per wear for makeup products, I think could be very useful because they do expire unlike clothes. I have two primers left. One is like a little sample from Milk Makeup. It's their Hydro Grip Primer. This is definitely the best primer I have ever used and it does come in a pump, so I feel very comfortable sort of keeping this one. I really love this. I'm definitely gonna buy it again when it runs out. I've kind of been saving this for special occasions only because Milk Makeup has not been possible to get in Norway up until now. Then I have the Fenty Beauty primer and this is actually only good for 12 months. This has been the primer I've tended to use and I've used this with my Kevin O'Conn concealer, the one I threw away, but I've loved mixing this into really essentially a thick concealer to create my own very lightweight 
foundation. It's such a beautiful combination. And this is only good for 12 months. So I have a couple of months left of use for this one. It's such a beautiful product. It's such a shame that I haven't even finished half of it. I'm really gonna try to actually finish this. And these two, I'm not gonna buy a new primer until I actually finish something. Foundations. I have the NARS Sheer Glow uh, Foundation. This is supposed to be good for 24 months. I think that's about it, but it's also kind of empty. So I'm gonna get rid of this, but I'm gonna set it aside because I'm gonna save the pump. I want to buy this again, but I think I have to finish all the other foundations I have. I have the Fenty Ease Drop because it has that squeeze tube. I feel like this should be sanitary. Then I have the Giorgio Armani Neo Nude Foundation and this is good for 12 months. It's I've had it for longer than that. I'm going to get rid of it. It's a little bit too dark for me right now because I have completely fallen off self tanning at the moment but it is a little bit old so I'm going to get rid of it. I do like it though. It's really nice, but really, really glowy. I definitely can't use these two together. I have the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Airbrush Flawless Foundation. The names are so long. I have this in the shade 2 Neutral, and I definitely feel like it's a little bit too dark for me. And I don't know, I feel like the oxidation on this foundation is getting worse and worse the longer I have it now that I'm thinking about it, so maybe that is because the product is expired. Then I have the Dior Backstage Foundation. I've actually used this a fair bit. I don't know if I'm gonna repurchase it because I actually prefer both this and the Luminous Silk foundations. Just considering how much foundation I can actually get through in a year, I just have to be more realistic. I don't feel like I want to justify owning a ton of different foundations anymore. I'm only one person and I feel like my makeup collection, I feel like it should reflect the fact that I'm only one person and I don't use a ton of makeup. The Luminous Hill foundation. So I think that right there is the jar. Can you see that? I think it says 12 months, but I need a microscope to be sure. But this one is still good. Thankfully, again, I'm just gonna sanitize the cap and everything. So I have two foundations left. You can't even see this powder, but the Charlotte Tilbury powder is broken. I'm getting to the powders, and here is where I'm a little bit sort of conflicted. I'm going to get rid of this. It's also broken, so it's just a nightmare to try to use. I definitely feel like powder products tend to have a much longer expiration date because they don't hold bacteria the same way wet, like cream or liquid products do. But, but, if you touch your brush to your face and then into the product, this could technically still hold that bacteria just based on it being on a surface. It doesn't have as much to kind of feed off of because it's not wet, but I have been reading studies where they have actually taste, tasted, definitely not tasted, they have tested makeup products and powder products, things like this, and they have come back with lots and lots of bacteria and obviously the longer you keep a product the more that bacteria has a chance to sort of grow but i've been using that when my skin is looking shiny so there's oil on it and i've been essentially transferring that oil onto the makeup product and then back onto my skin and back and forth um so from my understanding that is why you kind of want to throw it away so i'm going to get rid of this I probably wouldn't if I didn't just have that infection and I know I've been using this, it's gonna go. And the same with this loose powder, this is from Fenty. I'm gonna be honest, I'm probably gonna repurchase this. I've been really, really happy with this. But again, because this is a loose powder, I've gone into it with my brush, there is no way to sanitize this. Okay, this is currently what I have left of my <laughs> base products, two foundations two primers and that concealer that I will get rid of if it's not actually suiting my skin tone. The bag is so full. There is so much money in that bag that is just wasted. Gone. Bye bye. But I think it's important that it hurts because I need to remember to not purchase so much. I feel like I've become a lot more conscious of not buying so much makeup. I have drastically reduced how much makeup I bought in the past year, even like two years, um, it has slowed down. And even so, there are so many products I haven't finished since my previous declutter two years ago, and that should be kind of like a wake up call. I think it is. Evidence for the makeup graveyard, I suppose. 
these are cheek bronzer highlighter there are some products here that are a little bit difficult to get rid of this one isn't too hard this is the illamasqua <clears throat> it just fell out like that is how old this is <laughs> This right here, this is like a contouring stick. So I'm going to get rid of this. Will I buy it again? I don't know. I'm not like really into contouring at the moment. Are you? I don't know. I also have this Fenty um, cream bronzer I've been using as contouring instead. This is a little bit easier to control for like around the nose and things like that. It's a beautiful, really cool shade. I have a few highlighters and that's gonna hurt because I love highlighters. I've bought this so many times. It's MAC, like their cream color base, and this is in pearl. It's so beautiful for giving that really, really natural, not over the top whatsoever. It's a really old product. Like they've done this for years and years and years and it's just gotten quite very, very sort of forgotten. Will I buy it again? I don't know because I feel like now I shouldn't keep so many highlighting products or so many products in the same category. So I don't really know. I do think it's beautiful, but I don't need to buy everything that I like or even love, you know? There should be a limit here. This one is a little bit sad. My Charlotte Tilbury, what's this called? It, it's flawless something. It's their highlighter filter thing. It comes with, with this doe foot applicator. I think that's such a shame. I wish it came in a pump instead. I'm gonna try to buy it again, but this sells out so quickly. When I restock my makeup kit here, I'm gonna write the date I open it on the bottom and just for how long it's good if it's not saying so on the packaging. What is this? Ah, the NARS highlighting stick. This is in Copacabana. I have not used this in a million years. I actually bought a few of the NARS, whatever the these sticks are called. I bought a couple of the blushes and this highlighting shade. I didn't really like any of them. And then I just held on to it because I spent so much money on it when I should have just let it go as soon as I saw that I didn't really like this. I tried to use it a few times. I've even used it like on the body, but I have other products I prefer more. So I think the lesson here is to not buy three different shades in a product you haven't even tried so you don't know if you like the formula which I ended up really 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 not liking. I have a Fenty powder highlighter. I think it's like the lightest one. It's really fun. It's quite intense and I like that you have two different shades so you can kind of use either one or mix them together. I think it's nice. Am I going to buy it again? I don't know. I'm feeling kind of lost on powder highlights and I do quite like them. I love layering them over cream or liquid highlights, highlighters. If you have any powder highlighters you would recommend, let me know because I feel like I haven't found one that I really, really love yet. I feel like I'm almost just like throwing things away on autopilot at this point, but this one is good for nine months, which it's definitely older than that. And I'm kind of surprised that this one is only supposed to be good for nine months. I have this Dior Backstage Face and Body Glow. This is actually my second bottle of this and I'm going to keep this because this comes in that sort of nozzle thing. I think it's safe to keep. I don't use this a ton on the face. I've been using the Charlotte Tilbury on the face. I prefer that more for the face, but this is so beautiful on the body. I have this little dual palette thing from uh, Natasha Denona and this is like a mini highlighter and a bronzer compact duo thing. The thing is, I can't use bronzers that are that small. What brush am I dipping into here? I like the idea. I didn't really think it through. And then when I started using it, eh. as you can see, this packaging has come apart. This is the Patrick Ta Shiso LA. And this is a blush. I've used it as a bronzer. I think it's a beautiful color. I, this is a cream and powder, but since I got my Fenty bronzer instead, I have used this because the color is just a little bit better for someone very pale. So I really love this Fenty. I haven't actually hit pan yet, but it's gotten like a pretty good dent into it. And this is good for 12 months. So I think this is sort of on the edge where this is actually reaching the expiration date. It's time I can buy a new bronzer. It's fine. I'm probably actually going to repurchase that, I think, because I really do love it, even though it hurts getting rid of something and then going into store and buying it again. I have blushes. I have this Illamasqua one and this is too old, but the color is beautiful. It's in 
a color called Psychomatic. I'm going through here at least. I feel a little bit better finding at least a few products that I have actually hit pan on. I have definitely not used this while I had the infection brewing anyways but because it is so old I am going to get rid of it. This one hurts okay this one is not fun at all. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Glowgasm in it's the pink shade. Uh, this is supposed to be good for 12 months so this is technically still good and uh, I feel like it's such a shame throwing this away before it's finished. It's such a beautiful product and it's so expensive and it's always sold out so uh, this one, uh, yeah, this hurts. This is not fun at all. I see a lot of people complain that there is very little product in these, but considering you apply it like this, maybe it's a good thing. I did already complain of other products. Why couldn't they just lower the price and just have less product, please? These are expensive though. I have two Fenty blushes. These are gorgeous, both of them. Uh, they're only good for a year each and I have had this one for two months and this one for half a year. This is so beautiful for summer. Mixed in with a bronzer it looks so much like you just have that beautiful sort of flushed tan. It's so gorgeous. I'm gonna repurchase this but I'm probably gonna wait until the summertime. It looks so scary but these blushes are just so wonderful at sheering out and suiting even like very pale people. It hurts getting rid of products that aren't bad yet but I have used both of these so much recently. This one again so beautiful you wouldn't think it looking at this complexion here. So this is called the Rose Latte for anyone interested in checking it out. I realize I haven't even removed the plastic from the mirror here. But I've used this a ton since I got it a couple of months ago. So this one, I'm gonna have to repurchase. The last thing here is I have a blush <clears throat> palette. Um, they're not much used in the past couple of years. The one I have used the most is this one. And this is also the one that hurts the most. And it's a MAC blush. This color is discontinued. It's Tenderling. And again, if you're really, really pale, it's such a good shade. There are so many blush shades that are really, really difficult to work with when you are pale. And this blush here, Tenderling, you can see it just looks almost like nothing. And it's the perfect blush shade for me. Uh, I'm going to get rid of all of them though. They're old and I don't tend to use them. And as I have mentioned, I don't want to have a ton of different products anymore. But I, I'm gonna keep the palette though. And with that, I can see that my camera battery is blinking at me. These declutters always take a long time, but it feels really good to have done it. So I'm just going to switch battery and we're going to move on to the next category. All right, I had to go and get myself a smoothie. And yes, this is a measuring cup to get a little bit more sort of fuel to get through this. I have gathered all of my eyeshadows, eye makeup, some brow products and things like that. This is definitely of the harder category. Let me show you everything I have. So it's kind of like a little bit of a mess, but as you can see, I don't have a ton of eyeshadow palettes. This is, I think, the only new one since my previous declutter. So I've definitely sort of cooled down on buying excessive eyeshadow palettes. I feel like a lot of people can relate to eyeshadows just being difficult to, especially eyeshadow palettes, they're just fun. They're just so exciting. It's not that fun buying new foundations all the time, but eyeshadow palettes just have this magic to them. Where do I even start? Let's do brows. I definitely go through brow products like crazy. I have this from Anastasia Beverly Hills, which I have not used in like a year or two, I think. I just have a problem with these brow pens running out fairly quickly. If the product isn't sort of in the tip when I'm using it and I have to kind of push down, it loses its whole purpose in my opinion because then it, you don't get that like fine thin line. I also have this brow pen from NYX, NYX however you say it. Um, I think I'm gonna repurchase this just because I go through these as I said very quickly. It's nice to not spend too much money on it. I have bought the Anastasia Beverly Hills one as well. It's beautiful but I, it just disappears into thin air. So I also have the dip brow. 
as you can see at least i have kind of hit pan on this one i have used a ton of it only actually supposed to last for six months i had this for two years i think i think i'm gonna repurchase this because it's just so beautiful to create brow hairs with i don't really want to be without it i have all of one eyeshadow primer and i've tried to repurchase this a few times it's the smashbox 24 hour whatever thing but this is years and years and years old uh, it's taking me a really long time to actually finish this but i think this is fantastic because it's sort of that squeeze out tube but this is empty so i will be buying a new one either way i also have brow gels this one is disgusting uh, as you can see i actually think brow gels should be clear like this one this is just from mac and it gets discolored incredibly fast and i'm not even gonna open this because i haven't used it in a really long time because i know it smells absolutely disgusting and then i just haven't thrown it away i also have this um brow gel from patrick Ta, and this is almost like glue for your brows it does really really hold them in place and a little bit difficult to get in Norway that's sort of the only drawback here I think I also had one of those like soap thingies which I have used all of one time the top layer looks really 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 weird and I don't know if that is just a product I would assume that's just the product getting a little bit weird but it's supposed to be good for 12 months probably in that area don't really use it either way it's gonna go an old mascara and i really like buying these travel size mascaras because they're obviously less expensive but i have to switch out my mascaras every other month anyways because my eyes are so sensitive i have this by terry one that i haven't used for that long i think a month but again this is a travel size so i'm going to get rid of this as well it actually says 12 months on this that is kind of weird I would not have used it for that long i do quite like it but am i gonna repurchase it because it's really expensive i am onto something i find a little bit difficult because i have these pencil eyeliners and i think technically i could dip them into alcohol and then shave them off and dip them into alcohol again i don't know do that a couple of times and really shave them down but they're also, some of them are quite old. So I think all the stuff that's old, I'm just going to let go of. Like this one right here. This is Rodial, whatever, however you pronounce it. I'm sure I'm butchering it. It says on this, it's good for six months. And it's definitely older than that. I don't think I've bought a new pencil eyeliner at least the past year. I've really tried to not buy so much makeup and use what I have instead. And clearly even then i prefer to use the same few products over and over again so many pencil liners and i got rid of a ton last time i decluttered i need a brown and a black and that's pretty much it and i'm pretty sure the last few times i have decluttered i've kind of like looked at these and thought it's fine it's a neutral i should keep it and then when i don't use it i shouldn't really keep it should i like this blue eyeliner i'm not gonna keep that so a lot of these pencil liners like here that tend to be much more creamy you can see they dry out like this very quickly in my experience it honestly makes me a little bit sick to look at this huge plastic bag of all these products that i'm throwing away thinking about all the money and all that waste for nothing i think it's a good sign to get a little bit sick and i think it's important to acknowledge that i've had far too much makeup than any person needs it's not good for me i don't want to do that anymore this lip liner as you can see i pr probably sharpened this at my previous declutter and i have not used it since it's good for 30 months it's older than that as well i definitely thought i would have a much stronger urge to run out and buy a ton of new makeup especially looking at the like little handful of makeup products i have left i don't want to buy something new until i actually sit and do my makeup and i'm like Ooh, I, I really wish I had a black pencil liner here. That's when I might go out and buy a new one. But there is like a little bit of a need for some makeup shopping here anyways. So it's a good thing to not buy too much because this is going to be really expensive to replace. Like I'm not going to 
stick that under a chair is that an english idiom it's a norwegian one anyways i don't want to pretend like anyone can just throw away all their makeup and go and repurchase everything that's also not what i am doing that would be incredibly expensive especially when i consider if i want to actually only keep things for the time the amount of time they are good before they expire there is no way i can justify having this kind of amount of makeup some people have a need for a lot of makeup i do not i am not one of those people i definitely want to be much more intentional with every single product i bring back into my collection and trying to remember that my quality of life does not depend on me having 10 different highlighters so no matter the price point i just want to slowly add things into my collection i don't want to buy a ton and then build up in the price range as I go on and you never replace all of this in one go. So just know that even though it might look like I'm taking things quite easily, throwing things away here, I have had like 10 days of antibiotics thinking about doing this. We're gonna move on. I have another eyeliner pot, MAC. Again, why did I buy one more gel liner if I already had one that I felt worked? It makes absolutely no sense. I have some uh, cream eyeshadows from MAC, Constructivist, Quite Natural, and then Soft Ochre. Soft Ochre I have actually repurchased a few times. As you can see, this one has dried out. I don't tend to actually be able to finish these. I'm definitely not going to replace all of them, and I have used the Soft Ochre one mainly as a sort of eye primer with some color to it but I've just found that it's very intense and I like my eyeshadow looks to be a little bit more natural so if I use this I remove all my natural color from my eyelid and it's great if I want to have like a very intense eyeshadow look but these two I think I have powder eyeshadows I want instead I bought this set of Natasha Denona. These are like cream eyeshadow things. I used them a few times, but they're a little bit, they're metallic and very cool, but very, very intense. Then I have this shade, it's called Hawks. This is also from MAC. If I'm doing like a red lip or something that's a little bit more retro, this is such a gorgeous color to put through the crease instead of just like a regular brown this is beautiful it just makes the whole look so incredibly cohesive i have this huda beauty eyeshadow what's it even called melted eyeshadow i've only used this a few times as well it's been a really long time that i've had this and i just never really i don't know got completely on board with it Maybe I just didn't give it enough of a chance because, I mean, that looks absolutely beautiful. I've used it a couple of times and it's been over a year, so this one is just gonna go as well. Then I have these Hourglass eyeshadows and I have one that I can't find and I'm so upset. But either way, I should buy a new one anyways. I have these in a few different shades. I will be repurchasing the Ray and Reflect, I think. Well, I'm obviously not a beauty YouTuber, I definitely can't swatch this for the life of me where it looks good on camera. But I really love these eyeshadows because I just apply them over the lid, a little bit of a sort of transition colour. It's a full eyeshadow look in itself, you don't have to do that much. But I don't feel like all the shades are equally as good and I think two will be enough because how many sort of shimmery sparkly eyeshadows do i need honestly not that many the choice just tends to overwhelm me and then i go with the same one every time and ray i have used so much i have two single eyeshadows from nars and these are like do they still do this where they are magnetic so they stick to each other these are beautiful but i never end up using them uh this is such a gorgeous shade the pacife and uh Himalaya. They are beautiful, but again, how many do you need? I mean, I'm not saying they're bad products. I think it's more that I don't... I can't justify owning everything I like. Can't do that anymore because then I end up with way, way, way too much. And I never want to sit here again and throw away this much makeup. This is another sort of duo eyeshadow from NARS. Beautiful. It's called a soul day. These very gold and coppery shades. These are so beautiful for summer. <sighs> I mean, everyone makes this, right? Everyone makes these kinds of shades. I like grabbing a palette and then this just disappears further and further into the drawer. I have this eyeshadow stick from Nude Sticks in Gilt. Again, what did I say? 
everyone makes these shades. I feel like it's started to dry up a little bit. It's not as smooth to apply. I can see it on my hand. It's sort of not as creamy anymore. I have this pigment that I've only used one time and I feel good about keeping this because I only open up the top and sort of pour out a little bit. So this is definitely not contaminated in any way. This is the tan shade from MAC. I like to mix it in with body lotion to get that sort of like glow and it gives me like a little tiny bit of a tan. I have made these kind of like quad things myself. I don't use these shades, they're definitely old. Nothing here is too unique apart from this blue shade here. In reality, I just never wear this kind of eyeshadow look for myself and I, I don't want to hang on to things that I don't wear. I will remove the eyeshadows and then just sanitize the palette. I'm not gonna throw away the palette. Um, I have another one of those, these purple eyeshadows. This is kind of like one of the few eyeshadows that I would consider repurchasing. This is Woodwinked, that one right there. And it looks quite boring, but I quite like that. It's again, one of those eyeshadows that looks so good just on its own. If I'm sitting there and thinking, oh my gosh, I really wish I had that shade, which obviously I have not done because I have that shade and I forgot I did. I mean, it's just the curse of having so many options, far more options that I, than I really want to. Three of these and I am not reached for them in over a year. I just want to show you the rest here. Um, I have two <clears throat> eyeshadow quads and you can see that that one just fell out. Uh, it, it does that. <laughs> and I don't know exactly how old these are. I just know that I bought these when I think she had like somewhere between five or eight eyeshadow quads and that was it. Um, and I like these but I'm not blown away. So after two, I felt like they're too expensive for the quality. I know that might be like not the most popular thing to say. I feel like there's a lot of fallout and the color, they're not like the easiest to blend in my experience. And the shimmer shades here, the one that fell out of this palette, for me, they were beautiful the first two, three times I used it and then the payoff wasn't there anymore. So for that reason, I haven't reached for these. I bought this Patrick Ta eyeshadow palette, which is super reflective. I think last summer, it says here it's only good for 12 months. I have actually used these two shades quite a bit. I don't know if they're supposed to be cream eyeshadows or eyeliners. It probably says somewhere. I have used some kind of as liners and I think the color sort of layout here is beautiful. This shade is gorgeous, but uh, even this lightest shade here on me, is darker than my skin tone so i don't really i really i really want an eyeshadow palette where i have like a lighter eyeshadow that is actually light so it has that brightening effect that's not like an actual glitter you know it's nice but it's not the one i'm the most sad about letting go of it's really kind of crazy to me that this is already expired 12 months and <laughs> i have not hit pan on anything definitely not the most painful one my Natasha Denona gold eyeshadow palette. I bought this, I think, three years ago. This is definitely the item in my makeup collection I am the most sad about letting go of. This is discontinued because of course it is. I've been using these, like this one and this one and this one. These shades have been my go-to. And when I've pulled out any palette, it tends to be this one only because I love doing these neutral looks because these are so creamy. They're so easy to blend. I've even just taken my finger into the eyeshadow, rubbed it on my lid, taken a clean finger around and it looks blended. I hesitate to say they're worth it because they were so expensive and it's only a makeup item, but I have decided to buy a new Natasha Denona palette. Sadly, I cannot get this one. If I could, I would repurchase it in a heartbeat, but I will buy some other palette of hers and try that instead. Really sad. I'm just, I'm, this one is really, really hard and I know I'm being dramatic because they are just material things and it's really important for me to remember to not like buy a ton of makeup and get really attached to it because hello. Um, I have this Urban Decay palette. I think this was in my previous declu declutter two years ago and this one is supposed to only be good for two years. My Natasha Denona palette, also two years. 
So that's something to keep in mind. How much eyeshadow can I actually go through in two years without burning my eyelids off? So I've had it for two years. I told myself then that I was going to give it a chance. I clearly did not give it a chance. I have not used it a single time in those two years. And I think in my mind, because there were so many colors, I just figured it's a waste to get rid of. What if I want grass green eyeshadow? Turns out I don't. Not ever. Not in the past two years have I ever wanted eyeshadow like that. I have the Viseart neutrals palette and this one is so old this was like way before it became hyped i bought this at imats in london i mean we're talking like six seven years old it's so old and it's supposed to only be good for two years i feel like they're a little bit dry i wish they were creamier i feel like i'm cursing everyone out by saying that because i know people love them i know people love visi art and i just never it's not bad i just Maybe they're not for me. Do you want to see all the eye products I have left? <laughs> this is great. I have this one and this. There are more tools than I have makeup at this point. Ugh, I'm going to sanitize all my brushes. I'm just going to dump them in a bunch of alcohol. And whichever survive, they will be my new brushes. Lipsticks. I have this entire box of them. Uh, my issue here will be to just go through and see what am I going to repurchase and then cry a little bit Hydrate you can see I have a ton of lip liners and I use two or three. I don't use a ton of lip liners I love using the same ones at the bare minimum I feel like I need one nude lip liner and a red one. I can get by with that. This is Ew, this is disgusting. I don't know what this is, but this is the grossest thing I have seen all day. Warning, this is disgusting. I'm gonna show you. Uh, look away if you don't want to see this. What the hell is that? This is disgusting and I now want to set my entire house on fire. Ew, 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 ew. Okay, we're not keeping anything. Everything has to go. I have this uh, from MAC. This is Cruella. It's a beautiful color. It's going everything is going this is like a darker brown when i thought i could pull that off turns out i'm about 50 shades too light for that i'm so terrified of opening another lipstick and seeing that entire ecosystem uh as you can see at least this one is quite used <laughs> this is nars uh, dolce vita and it's a beautiful color if you're really pale this looks like a muted red it's so gorgeous i might actually repurchase this one so you can see either it's kind of tiny because it's a lip pencil I use or I don't use it. I also have this one lip liner from Patrick Ta. This is supposed to be good for 12 months. I've had it for two years. I love this one because it's so sharp. You can see the, the edge of it here. I haven't really used it much because I did get Invisalign pretty much a couple of months after getting this lip liner. It's a beautiful color though, but I, mm, I'm i not too keen on these retractable lip pencils because you can't really sanitize them. I suppose maybe I could do with this like I did the brow pencil where I just sort of take it up and then maybe sort of cut off a bit of it. Maybe that could work, but I mean, it is already expired, so let's go. Bye bye. I have these two lip liners from Charlotte Tilbury and this one I'm quite kind of sad about. This is Iconic Nude. I know I bought this two years ago and it is expiring after 24 months. This is basically my go-to nude lip liner. I did check. It sold out. I can't find it in stock anywhere. If you know where it is, let me know because I will be needing to reorder this. But I guess I'm just ending up with no lip liners and completely fully disgusted i mostly have lipsticks and lip glosses left i also have like some random pieces like uh, setting sprays and these are very old so i'm just gonna r get rid of both of those it's incredible how easy it feels now to get rid of things versus the start of me filming this and decluttering. I know it's gonna be hard to do the lipsticks, but overall this feels really good, even though I pretty much have no makeup left. Also, uh, Beauty Blender, obviously that is going. 
Should I do glosses first? That's easier. Let me do that first. I have MAC lip gloss here and it truly does feel like it looked like gloss and I love that this comes in a tube where it's easy to squeeze it out but it just it makes the lipstick run quite a bit so I think this is great for photos but it's quite old. I really don't use that much lip gloss that I can justify having all of these lip glosses. I always think I don't have a ton. Let me actually show you what we're dealing with here. So glosses, various lipsticks and sort of lip chubby lipstick pencil things. All right, considering that these lipsticks typically say at most 24 months, two years. How much lipstick would I have to reapply every single day to be able to wear all of this in two years? It's insane. Never, ever, ever again. That's the only thing I can do at this point. I can just not do it again. I have this lip gloss wheel and I have used this for photos, which is why I've always used a spatula, so it should be pretty hygienic. But this says 30 months, it's older than that, and I never use this on myself. If you're doing makeup on other people, I can definitely recommend looking into getting this because even though it's not a luxurious feeling to wear it, and it's very inconvenient to wear on a personal level where you would reapply, this is beautiful if you need a few different shades for a photo shoot. I have these Hourglass lip glosses. These are beautiful. You can see I've actually used these quite a bit as well. This pink one is the least used. It's about here. So I have this much product left, which is a lot. It's a beautiful color. This is called Horizon. And then I just have their clear one. I do tend to end up just using clear lip glosses for the most part. As you can see, I just have a little bit left. So I have actually gotten like a decent amount of use out of these and they were quite expensive. So thankfully I have used them a bit. Was it a bit overkill buying three? Possibly. Just a random gold colored MAC lip gloss. And another MAC, this is called Love Nectar. This is such a gorgeous color but it's quite old and I haven't used it enough. It's just a bit too sticky. So ugh. these Clarins lip, uh, I think it's like a gloss balm hybrid. They're beautiful, they're so comfortable to wear. So I haven't used it for that long, so it's a little bit, ugh. I'm a little bit bitter about getting rid of this one, but I mean, lip glosses, I when you apply it directly to your lips, it just, there is so much bacteria that um, I'm sure I should get rid of them much more frequently than I apparently have done. I have this Tom Ford lip gloss as well. This one is just, it just wasn't it, where it just, it has too much white in it. And you can see it started to separate a little bit as well. And this was pretty expensive as you can imagine. And it barely, like, it looks like it's barely touched. Lessons learned, hopefully. The Lost Lip Gloss, this also stings a little bit. This is Patrick Ta Major Glow Lip Shine. And this I've only used a couple of times, but it is quite recently, so I just have to get rid of it. I think that's it for lip glosses. I am probably only going to repurchase one. It's probably gonna be a clear one of some kind. And then I'm gonna stick with that even though there are so many beautiful lip glosses, I personally do not use them enough to justify having like, I don't even know how many lip glosses that were, but too many for my use, when I typically end up using just a clear one anyways. I also have these lip stains, which are pretty cute, and I haven't used them a ton, which is kind of shame. I felt like they were, if I remember correctly, they were a little bit sort of patchy or not just not amazing and i think that's kind of a clue when i always end up using something else instead like if i want a red i'm not gonna go for this red and the same with these like the pink and this gold nude color i'm just gonna go for something else so i mean money down the drain i have another liquid lipstick this is from charlotte tilbury again i've only used this a few times it ended up just being too dark if i'm going to wear a nude i I'm not like too adventurous. I'm not I'm not needing 10 different nude shades. I need a couple that I love and that's it. I have these liquid lipsticks that are from MAC. They are definitely too old and again because they have this doe foot applicator. 
not very sanitary is it there is only one shade i would kind of miss and that is the shade dance with me beautiful and kind of like cool red and even though they aren't my favorite formula on me they just stay all day when i've kind of like wanted to wear a red lip and i can't touch up i've worn this will i replace it i don't know i'm kind of unsure i'm kind of torn between that wanting to try out something new and not wanting to go into the same trap of buying a ton of different products and then just after a wear or two figuring out i don't like this i want to be very very intentional going forward I mean, imagine if we all threw out every single makeup product as soon as it expired. I wonder if we would kind of be more conscious of the extreme expenditure we have on makeup. Maybe some of you do, like you're really good about throwing out products. I have clearly not been good enough. A Rimmel lipstick and I know I saved this from my previous makeup declutter only because I love the shade so much so I haven't worn it yet. But I just wanted the shade as a reference of something I wanted to replace it with. I don't know why I'm dragging my feet so much because all of these, I guess I could just take this entire tray and just turn it upside down and throw everything out. But it is useful to go through and see what I want to replace. And I just want to be conscious of not like running out and buying 10 new lipsticks because clearly I have not used 10 different lipsticks in the past year and that should be kind of like something to think about. MAC Diva, too dark, never wear it. MAC Modesty. Oh, this is a beautiful color on me. Oh no. Ravishing. This is also a great color. Uh, actually, I have another one I like more. All right. I actually have four shades that I do kind of like, but MAC formula in lipstick is not my favorite. I have Honey Love. As you can see, there is so much left of nearly every single lipstick here, which is definitely a wake up call. This shade right here is called Honey Love. It's such a beautiful nude shade then i have this beautiful one called c sheer and i don't know if this has gone bad or what but this as well let me try to get some more light it just gets dark so early now this is called c sheer and this truly does have more of that sheer finish which is what i love so much it just freshens up the face i love doing this on the lips and then the cheeks and using it as a blush even sometimes like a little bit in the crease as an eyeshadow i'm not sure whether i will replace this one then i have this modesty as you can see again not really used enough that I feel like I can justify buying a new one of these. I am gonna restock the nude lipsticks that I feel like I can't really live without. This one is also hard. This is called Brick Ola. And I really love this because on me, it just has that perfect muted red. Whereas a lot of red lipsticks just look so intense on my skin tone. I definitely think that removing options and having fewer lipsticks is going to make me actually use the ones I have because now I have a few go-to and then there are too many options so I end up using none of them. This is a Patrick Ta and this is a beautiful, beautiful warm orangey red. It's matte and on me I think it just went a little bit too matte. As you can see this is not very much used whatsoever. Then I have some NARS. There is no way to justify how little I have used these and then decided in my mind that it's okay to go and purchase more lipstick, more red lipstick. It's absolutely baffling. And this shade as well, it's a nice nude, but again, it just didn't quite hit the spot for what I need my nude lipstick to do. So clearly I have not used these enough. This is a Fenty lipstick this is kind of like on the darker side and this actually does work i used this a fair bit last fall i think it's beautiful because it's so sheer it's quite easy to pull off this is in the shade bubble rum at least i did go for something i didn't already have a ton of already let's do charlotte tilbury i have this tiny one that i've used all of like two or three times that this was just like a gift with purchase and this is in the shade glowing gen which didn't quite work on me but the packaging is so cute i wish you could buy these tiny ones 
because they would be perfect in a tiny clutch instead of lugging the entire lipstick around. You can tell how little I've used most of these lipsticks. This would last so long. There is no problem with selling these tiny lipsticks and you could do half the price, but they never would, would they? This is Penelope Pink. You can see this is definitely one of my more used nude lipsticks. And this one is very, very neutral. I have another nude one that is more peach. So this one, I've already ordered a backup of. Feeling very good about letting that go. It's gonna be here in a couple of days. I'll be fine. And then I have this one, which is not quite a nude. As you can see, this is not too old, but this is a little bit more peach. I mean, the packaging of these lipsticks right here, incredible, just so, so beautiful. I have this one, this is called Viva La Vergara. I think this would be a beautiful muted red on someone that has a more tan complexion. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous color. Clearly I haven't used it enough. I feel like that I can justify actually buying a new one of these. I have some YSL lipsticks. Two of them are like these minis. I have these two meanings and I think they're meant mostly as a way to kind of test out these shades and see if you want to buy a full size of them. As you can see, I've actually worn this red one quite a bit. I, I think it is the 01. I am considering buying that one well as well. I think the pink one is pretty, but it's just a little bit too cool for my skin tone. And I have another one I like better. And then I have two of the larger size Rouge Purgatoire. I think this is like the 70 Ligny. This is such a beautiful pinkish nude, just not something I wear a ton of, sadly. As you can see, this is so much, and I've had this for four years or something. I I just don't end up wearing it. And this shade, this is definitely going to be repurchased. This is the 52. It's such a pretty pink coral shade, but I tend to wear this mainly for summer. So I'm thinking maybe I should hold off on buying this until summer. I don't know, but it's a beautiful shade and I will repurchase that. My last YSL lipstick is this one. It's the Volupt Shine. This is a beautiful coral peach shade. This is just very, very moisturizing. I can see how it's so popular, but I prefer the Rouge Purgatoire because I still feel like these are super moisturizing. Just a little bit, they kind of last throughout the day a little bit better. Totally sure I will replace this. I'll hold off and if I one day feel like I really wish I had that shade, then maybe, maybe. I also have four Tom Ford lipsticks and just adding up the fact that these are 50 each is making me want to cry. But I realized that one of these I have actually not even worn because I bought this and then I think I had an issue with my lips when I bought it. So I put it to the side and it is this beautiful darker fuchsia color. So at least I'm starting off my collection with a couple of lipsticks. I don't know if that's a good sign that I bought such an expensive lipstick without even trying it on when I bought it, but at least it worked out for now. So <laughs> yay, my first lipstick in my new collection. One of them I'm really sad about because I have not been able to find it. This is such a beautiful nude shade on me. This lipstick is called Age of Consent and it is their matte range. And I bought this when I got my Invisalign because all the other very moisturizing lipsticks, especially in the beginning, because my teeth were just sticking out a lot. And with the plastic on top, all the lipsticks I had just transferred onto that. So I actually wore this a bit around that time. It's a beautiful sort of soft pink shade. I still feel like it's a little bit too matte. I'm not super keen on the finish of it. So I would not repurchase this and I'm kind of staying away from that matte range. So this one is going. This is a beautiful more warmer red. And if I'm being honest, when I want to wear a red, I have stuck to the YSL or even just the lip liner, which is why this has been criminally underused they just last so long. There is absolutely no way I can justify having a ton of lipsticks. Ooh, um, that is essentially it, I think. Who feels horrible right now? I do. I feel awful right now. I think it's part of the process. I think there is a uh, usefulness to this feeling. I'm hoping so. And let me show you this. <clears throat> Oh 
I don't even want to think about the amount of money I have spent on what is essentially, not even essentially, it's literally going into the bins and just bye bye. This has been very, very sobering. <laughs> Although not entirely fun. I can collect the makeup that I am keeping and we can all have a look at it. How do we feel about this? I could probably fit everything in here now. I'm not going to, I'm gonna sanitize everything first anyways. I'm not gonna lie, this definitely feels very much like I just lost my entire makeup collection. I don't want to start purchasing makeup again as if I were building a collection of things to save because I think I've learned that they are not to save, they are to use. I definitely would have saved a lot more if I weren't so cautious of the fact that it's better to be safe than sorry and obviously my doctor told me to get rid of things and do this. I definitely needed to do a makeup declutter as it was but I don't think I would have been as dramatic as I've been today if it weren't for the fact that my doctor told me to. I would have saved things that I am currently like what I currently use on a day-to-day -day basis but I think I also would have saved a lot of things that I probably should have gotten rid of and today I have done that. So I mean silver linings right? I also thought I would feel like running out and buying a ton of new makeup would be what made me feel better but I think what is going to make me feel better is actually living with a much much smaller makeup collection and being much more intentional with what I am adding and keeping this declutter and this whole lesson really in mind I think is going to stop me from making a lot of purchases that I really shouldn't be making. <laughs> And I'm really not trying to be sort of moralizing anyone or telling you what you should be doing. I will also head out and buy more makeup, which I know is probably not the best thing to say after doing a declutter. But keep in mind that I did get rid of this because my doctor told me to, not because I just want an excuse to buy more makeup. And I wanted to be very clear that this is not something I'm doing for fun. I really did not want to spend more money buying things I technically already have. That's just not my idea of a great time. I'm probably gonna do the second part of me restocking my collection for anyone who's interested. I'll do that in a separate video because this is just probably the longest video I've ever made ever. Other than that, thank you so much for watching and sort of doing this process with me. If you can take away one thing from this video, it is that having to let go of all these things makes me really consider how much I'm actually using. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day and I'll see you very shortly in the next video. Bye!